All right, so the introduction for this series, we drew this knife out. I just sketched it by hand. I said that on my Patreon, there's a link for a PDF download. Unfortunately, I can't find out how Patreon will let you upload a PDF, but I do have the image that can be downloaded there. But recent developments, James Keaton of Red Beard Ops, he actually is participating in the build along. He took this knife, brought it into Fusion 360, digitized it, and I'll put a link in the description to his channel. And he's got a PDF download, I believe it's a PDF. But anyways, you can get this digital file for free via his link. So thank you, James, for doing that. Thanks for partaking. It's really exciting. What I'm going to do is we're just going to take this paper. Uh, this isn't the original drawing. I just photocopied this. We're going to cut it out, lay it on a piece of 01 tool steel is the steel that I'm going to be using. First of all, I have lots of it. Second of all, I've got gator piss. I've never used gator piss before, and I want to see how good it does etching a mono steel like 01 as opposed to... Um, what I normally use my ferric chloride, apple cider vinegar combination. Let's get this thing cut out. Okay, that is gonna be a small little blade. <laughs> that is gonna be tiny. I kinda like it. It's, it's, it's smaller than I thought it would be. It looked bigger on paper. Just using some 3M Super 77. What I'm gonna do now is actually spray this with layout dye. I like the spray stuff the best. That way, as I'm grinding or cutting, if this paper template kind of gets burnt or something, I've got a silhouette. There she be. Now let's go cut it out. All right, so we are through the heat treat. That's how it turned out, pretty happy with that. I'm going to be using a 10 inch contact wheel and I've seen a lot of you folks email me your completed knives already and I need to get on this. I need to finish this thing up right now. It is uh, Monday, January 29th and uh, I wanna have this done by the end of January, so let's jump over. But on all the knives that you guys have been working on, you guys are doing an amazing job and it is so cool to see the different versions. There's some really cool ones. Uh, if you'd like to send them in, just send them to viewersknives at gmail.com. Put in the subject SLL build along four, and uh, I'd like to get a compilation video. So I'm assuming if you send them, you're happy with me sharing them. And it's, it's really cool. I want you guys to see this when I put this video together, all the different ways, the different ideas that can go into what is essentially the same knife but that'll be coming out after this video. I need to get to grinding, so let's head into the grinding room. We'll set up our jig, set up our wheel, and uh, let's see how hard it is to put a bevel on a, on a little curved blade like this. Before I grind it, I just need to mark in center line of the bevel. Got a mark there, let's do some grinding. I've marked out a couple lines where I want my top of my grind to go, so. This is weird. You were taking a lot there, not a lot there. No, I don't even know if I can do this. Ay, ay, ay. You 
the issue I'm running into is that we are pretty much at our line right there. Long ways away from it there, we're getting back to it, so... It's a compound grind, for sure. Okay, so here's a little predicament. For some reason, like when I'm grinding, this is my left side. This is usually my worst side. Somehow this bevel came out better than this bevel. See, we got some weird stuff going on there and it was just getting worse. And this is usually my strong side. I'm not gonna lie, that was probably one of the more difficult grinds I've done in a while. It was so bad that yesterday I actually had to just put it away because it was getting worse and worse. I was getting more frustrated and more frustrated, but uh, we ended up getting there. This isn't perfect, so this is the good side. And if you kind of look at that light line, you see it's fairly straight and consistent. That's what you want. Now, if we look at the light line on this side, this is mildly embarrassing. No, it's very embarrassing. Look at, see how it's not, it kind of wiggles and moves. That's because this surface isn't, isn't as even as this surface, but I'm gonna call that good for now. Uh, if this was a customer's knife, I would definitely not be releasing it. I'd probably toss it at this point, but this is just a knife for me. This is for opening boxes. I'm, you know, I, I think it'll be fine. So what we're gonna do now, uh, this will also help the situation, is we're just gonna sandblast this, and then I'm gonna do an acid wash on this. And for scales, what I'm thinking, just looking for something, I want this blade to be really nice and thin. And I've got this, I don't know what it is. It, it's like a translucent G10. And the one thing I was thinking, because I didn't do any holes for lightening this, like I don't have any through holes for epoxy, it'll be kind of cool because you'll be able to see the silhouette of the blade in there. If I had holes for epoxy, unless you spaced them and integrated that into the design, but uh, I think this is gonna look kind of cool. So that'll be our handle materials. Maybe I'll go ahead and kind of trace this out before we sandblast. Nah, that's fine, we'll just sandblast it, but let's go ahead, hit this in the blast cabinet, and then we will uh, get the glue and the handles on. All right, so I've just got the sandblast cabinet hooked up, but check this out. I am in the process of running lines, air lines, throughout the shop. And uh, this is a kit I got from Princess Auto, who is the sponsor of this video. Thank you so much to Princess Auto for kitting out this shop. I've got air lines to my milling machine, air lines to my motorcycle area, all from Princess Auto. Having a sponsor like Princess Auto, I mean, I really love having them on board. I shop there all the time. I remember my earliest memory of Princess Auto was probably when I was about, I want to say eight years old. When they first came to Calgary, my dad took me to Princess Auto and uh, I've loved them ever since. So always get your PPE on. Man, I like the way that turns out. I'll put a link in the description and maybe a card up on the screen in one of these corners of a modification I did to this blast cabinet. And uh, I wish you could feel it. Like it is a, it is a great texture. It's phenomenal. So I'm actually gonna leave some rather harsh edges on here. 
I'm not even going to round these out at all. Like when I do my my final sanding after glue up, these will get knocked down a bit. But I'm going to actually leave them like this. I've never done that before, and this is a great uh, great chance just to see. So what is gator piss, you ask? Well, it's a etchant, premix etchant for knife makers and metal workers by Baker Forge and Tool. Bought this stuff from Maritime Knife Supply. Bought myself one of these OXO containers, which is perfect for it. I think this stuff's formulated to do the best with like Damascus, but I thought, you know what? Let's give it a shot with some mono steel. Bubbles coming off of it. That is weird that there's bubbles coming off of it. Anyways, we'll just leave it in there for a while. See what happens. Well, it's been about an hour. It darkened it up. It's definitely different than when I use my normal mix of 75% ferric chloride, 25% apple cider vinegar. But a little time lapse that we shot, we could see this getting darker. I actually kind of like it. Uh, should I do a quick little tumble? Little acid stone wash. Maybe we will. I, I think we will. All right, we'll be back in five. Well, that's been five minutes. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, perfect. Nice clouded kind of marbled look to it. Clean up the blade. Defcon five minute epoxy. Okay, fantastic. Alrighty, I think this uh, epoxy is set up. Managed to get it all cleaned up. That is nice and thin. That actually is suitable. I dig that. Nice and small. The one thing I noticed looking at some of the images that you guys have shared is that I think this section here, you'll see it once we grind the scales away, but on mine, it seems thin and it seemed quite a few folks changed it just to make this part a little bit fatter. I think that might've been the right idea, but let's go ahead and get this thing finished up. The Raptor Claw. All right, so after a little hand sanding, took it to the buffer. I had some issues with these pins. I'll show you those in a minute. Now we're just gonna put an edge on it. I wanna try the uh, TS Prof on a curved blade to see how well it could possibly work. Never really done this before. Well, looks like it's sharpening. sharp. So we just got to put our maker's mark, but let's see if we got it sharp. Ooh, yeah. That is nice. Thing has a nice grab to it.
Now that didn't do what I wanted to, so we're gonna repeat that, but we're gonna use a different laser. This one I need to put safety glasses on for. Ooh. I like that. We're gonna repeat it again. We're gonna go maximum power. We're gonna maximum depth. There we go. Alrighty, we are done. This knife, I would consider it a mild failure. Um, it was a struggle to get this grind. I did end up getting it all right, but I'm just the design. This is one of those ones where it's okay, but it's, I'm not in love with it. I'm not crazy about it. And I think once I realized, like once I had cut it out and I held it in my hand, my passion for the project kind of just went downhill. That's why I went with the very, very simple scales. Burnt the pins, looks pretty terrible. What do you do? Not everything's a wild smashing success, but you guys have made some great knives and I'm gonna be sharing those at the end of this video. And it's really cool to see what you guys have done. I thank you guys so much for taking part. This is a lot of fun seeing what other people are making. You know, multiple people from different parts of the world making the same relative knife, but putting their take on it. And I really, really enjoy that part about it. So whether or not I love the knife that I made, I really like a lot of the knives that you guys have made. Thank you for partaking. And if you have suggestions for another build along, I don't think I'm gonna do one in February, but I was thinking if we did every other month, that might be a little bit more manageable. And uh, I would love it if you guys had designs maybe you wanted to submit. Again, you could send all that information to viewersknives at gmail.com, as well as your pictures of finished knives. If we have a lot of them, I haven't, I checked this morning, there's quite a few. We'll see, I might end up doing a dedicated video for all the people that participated. Or if I can squeeze it in in the edit, if this edit isn't too long, I've done a lot of filming, I don't know what all's gonna make it, but maybe I'll just put them in the end of this video. Either way, this was fun. Another excuse to try something I've never tried before, like a blade like this. I learned that my TS Prov will indeed sharpen an inside curve like that, so that was good to know. And I've got a good little box cutter. I, I think maybe my youngest son has this thing for knives. Maybe I'll just give it to him, I'll make a sheath and he can, he can thrash it around, but thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. And thank you again to Princess Auto for sponsoring this video. Cheers. Mm -hmm.